Hello, this is Chris Bennett. Join us weekly at POT TV on the Burning Shiva Hour as we explore the roots of cannabis culture throughout history and around the globe. On pottv.net, home of the herd. Hello, my name is Mark Emery. I'm the publisher of Cannabis Culture Magazine. I'm the proprietor of Pot Television. And I urge you, if you want to grow some fine marijuana, to check out emeryseeds.com or the Emery Seeds catalog in Cannabis Culture Magazine and grow yourself some fine marijuana. Hi, I'm Chris Bennett, host of the Burning Shiva Hour. Welcome to part three on our series on biblical hemp. Well, through the interactive nature of the internet, we've got a number of responses. I've received some private emails, people have posted stuff on the reviews, which I feel a need to respond to, as well as even a forum comment. And uh, since it's the interactive nature of the internet, I'm going to answer some of those comments, you know. First off, Sammy had a couple of uh, different questions. He said, if God required hemp incense for the high priest or whoever it may be, how would that challenge the legitimacy of the Bible, as you say? His laws are still his laws. The only thing it would challenge to me is the persecution of the plant. Well, this is my feeling on that. It's, this, is, this is particularly interesting because it's like, when I first came across these references to cannabis in the Bible, I was looking for references to cannabis in the Bible because I had a kind of a belief in the Bible. I was kind of like a Christian Rasta. And, uh, and I thought, like, like Sammy, that, well, if marijuana is in the Bible, then you know, the Bible must be true if they know what this is all about. But at some point, like Parsifal in the forest, I dropped the reins of the horse, and I just let the information take me where it would. And I gave up my belief system. I stopped trying to project onto the research Instead, just follow the research. And what I kind of came to the conclusion in that journey was that Moses was a shaman. Like many shamans around the world, he ingested a psychoactive plant in order to receive his revelations. So, it doesn't really take away the legitimacy of Moses' revelation, but Moses' revelation of the Lord was just that, Moses' revelation of the Lord. Just like, say, some South American shaman who ingests ayahuasca or some other powerful plant, interprets his experience coming from a certain spirit guide, are we to take that person's experience of their spirit guide to be the law for us all, the message for us all? I would argue that the real message for you individually can only be discovered by you individually. And maybe that all those messages come together and can bring up some sort of bigger message. You know, when we dream alone, we dream, and when we dream together, that's reality. So, my, my feeling is that, that it doesn't really take away, you know, from the, 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 the message contained in Moses' revelation, but it was just that. It was Moses' revelation of the Lord as experienced through ingesting the psychoactive plant. And like the tribal shaman leader he was, he interpreted that information and revelation as advice on how to rule the ancient Hebrew tribe that he governed over, just like shamans the world over have done. Another comment from Sammy is, I'm interested in hearing about the cannabis plant in the Jewish or Old Testament time, as others are probably too. Not if the God of the Bible was the same as the God of, of other religious people. If it wasn't illegal for them, then the Western Christian world shouldn't have to have problem with it either, and not jail people for something God's people, the Jews, had. Well, okay. This is another thing that I came to on my conclusion. Now, no, no people, no religion originates in a vacuum. They grow out, out of pre-existing cultures and traditions. Case in point is the comment made in Ezekiel. Thy birth and thy nativity is the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and the mother a Hittite. 
So he's talking about the Jews there, and he's saying that their father was an Amorite, and their mother a Hittite, and they come from the land of Canaan. So all these different cultures contributed to the birth of the Jewish people. In fact, Abraham, the father of the Jews, came from the Sumerian capital Ur. And this may account for the similarities uh, in the religious accounts of the Garden of Eden and the Flood from some earlier Sumerian myths, which they're obviously copied from. When you really take a look at this unbiasedly, and you read these myths, which are obviously much older, you cannot die that the biblical myths are copies of these older myths. And even as well, the whole concept of, of God, Jehovah, developed out of these earlier concepts of gods and goddesses and whatnot. So, in order to understand the Hebrew religion, we have to understand something about the religions of the people that preceded and also coexisted with them. And uh, this is particularly true of, of the Bible, because there's, uh, there's, throughout the Bible, they're continually showing battling these other cults and religions, and uh, that played such an important part in the development of the concept of Yahweh. So we have to look at that in order to understand, and, and all as well, this also gives us indications of how the cannabis was used, because these other cults and religions were using cannabis for shamanistic revelation long before the Hebrews. The Hebrews adopted this practice from these cultures, and uh, the similarity in names as well as the way they utilized it uh, defines this. So that's another comment from Sammy. I hope that answers your question there, Sammy. And uh, he has one last question. What is the view about the mistranslation of the word cannabis came about in the Bible? I mean, didn't they translate a word to calamus instead? If it really was cannabis, how could they mistranslate it? so close in time to the writing that we are. Okay, this is something that we're going to be discussing on the next episode of, of the biblical story of cannabis, the Moses and the burning bush. Now, I know in these first uh, three episodes, the first one was an introduction to the biblical sources for cannabis, and this one on, these two on the Garden of Eden, last week's episode and this week's episode, all about Eve, uh, um, are kind of looking at these cultures that preceded it. But in order to understand the Hebrew traditional use of cannabis, you have to understand something about these cultures because this has so much to do with the story of cannabis in the Old Testament and how it eventually became prohibited. Now, the word cannabosin is the Hebrew word that a number of scholars have said is cannabis. And this occurs five times in the Old Testament. Uh, um, the, 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 what they're saying is that when the, the, when the Old Testament was translated from Hebrew into Greek for the Vulgate, uh, shortly after the time of Alexander the Great, when there was an attempt to Hellenize the whole ancient world, and all books and uh, um, people were supposed to speak Greek, so that there was one common language, so it came to a common understanding, this word was translated as calamus. Now, a number of modern Bibles translate this word as fragrant cane. And this is actually a correct translation of the word cannabis. Cannabosum is the root word for a modern word, cannabis. And that's exactly what it meant. They didn't really grow plants for specifically for incense purposes and specifically for fiber purposes then. They grew one whole crop and they utilized the crop effectively. And a lot of times it was fragrant cane because these stalks were there that they were going to utilize for ritual cloth and whatnot and they'd cut the buds off and that would be the incense. So fragrant cane is in fact a, 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 a correct translation of cannabosum, and that's what the word cannabis means. And when we take a look at the similar word, kanabu, used by the Assyrians and Canaanites and other cults, we see that, and the way that that kanabu was used compared to the Hebrew kanabosum, we see that this is in fact the same plant. As well, as we'll be discussing in this series, when we see the effects of the kanabosum in the anointing oil and incense on the Hebrews themselves, as described in the Old Testament, it is undeniably an entheogenic preparation that we're talking about. So, you know, stick with the series. We'll be through with this initial kind of background information of the Garden of Eden, which is in fact the most powerful myth in all history, and sets the whole table for the story of the uh, cannabis in the Old Testament, its eventual prohibition.